Welcome back to Terror by the Bay. I'm David. Okay, uh, we got the news today that um, uh, Judge McAfee uh, dismissed six charges of the 41 count indictment uh, related to Trump and some of his co defendants um, in the Georgia RICO trial. Uh, these six charges were related to the solicitation, uh, soliciting the violation of oath of a public officer. And he stated that they lacked the required detail about what the underlying crime of that the defendants were soliciting. Um, so uh, the judge acknowledged that uh, that there is evidence to support it, and that they can use still use these um, this information to prosecute the bigger crime. His uh, his concern was that there was just a lack of detail and reference to the, uh, to the, was it the constitutional law and make sure I've got the, the, the verbiage here. I'll get skewered if I don't. Um, uh, do, do, do. The court's concern is less that the state has failed to allege sufficient conduct of the defendants. In fact, it has alleged an abundance. So they basically say there's a lot, there's a lot of here, here. However, the lack of detail concerning the essential legal element is, in the undersigned's opinion, Judge McAfee's opinion, uh, fatal. Okay. He did say they could refile the charges. Whether they do or not, we'll see. I mean, okay, so six are gone. You still have 35 um, uh, charges left. Is this the end of the world? Is this the death by a thousand cuts? Trump's lawyers basically say, well, since these six were tossed out, we should just toss out the whole case. Because clearly it's a political witch hunt. Clearly. <laughs> Justice card just popped up. Um, you know, you got a boyfriend, you pay for some vacations with some cash, and, <clears throat> and uh, six charges get tossed out. Clearly the fix is in what times we live in <clears throat> there's some speculation that uh, some pundits were looking at this and saying well maybe the judge thinks this case is going to go longer because he's giving the prosecution time to appeal which would not mean that this case is on a a fast track type of uh business but anyways let's look at the energy around judge mcafee and his um <clears throat> his ruling on the various counts that are being brought against Donald Trump and his co-defendants. Okay, entertainment purposes only. Let's see what we got. Okay, so he's looking at the at the counts. You can think of the uh, the coins as being um, the the counts or the crimes that have been committed by uh, Trump and his. Uh, his team as it were and i mean his legal team but trump and his co-conspirators and no he's doing an evaluation on it honestly it, it could very well be that these um charges were not well thought out and it's possible that um it's possible that uh vonnie willis and team don't have really enough um specific evidence to charge him with this or get the charges to stick so and maybe he's seen through that maybe they do have enough but he's giving it a higher level of scrutiny regardless the, now the vibe i get from this is and he, there was a quote from him saying that he wanted to be able to look his sons in the eyes you know when they're older and say he gave everybody a fair shake on this one and it just might be that he shook the bush and you know these six charges came rolling off it's like, okay, well, you know, um, these could be appealed. They might have been overturned on appeal. These other ones, they seem pretty uh, pretty fair at this point. I, I don't know if he's going to be dismissing more charges. It's always possible, I suppose. But for now, some have gone. A lot have stayed. He's taking this job very seriously. Um, and again, I think it's because he does not want his judgment overturned on appeal. 
There's the justice card again. It was flipping up as I was overhand shuffling. Yeah, he's cur he's concerned about the appeal. And he, again, I also think he is very concerned about coming across as fair-minded. And it's not easy to do. Uh, certainly from uh, the perspective of folks on the left and such, it seems like all the judges, with maybe the exception of Judge Chutkin, bend over backwards to accommodate this guy. And they do. <laughs> you, you don't believe me? Do whatever Donald Trump did next time you go to court and you're against a judge and mouth off on the judge or the, uh, the court clerk and see what happens to you and see how quickly it happens to you. <laughs> okay, I, don't do that. Do not do what Trump does in court. There's only one person in this planet, apparently, in the United States anyways, that can get away doing what Trump is doing, and that's Trump. Okay? We don't have to like it. It's just the way it is. I don't like it. I think it's really disrespectful. He can get away with it. He's got, you know, 33% of the population really convinced uh, that on a lot of things. It's a cult. Now, I know that I've got some Trumpers here that watch this or other people that's like, it's not a cult. It really is. There's nobody running around with Obama flags. Nobody's running around with Joe Biden flags or Hillary Clinton flags or Jimmy Carter flags. Lord knows Jimmy Carter could stand to have a bunch of flags about him. Man was a really decent human being and kind of the epitome of what a Christian should be. But I'll just park that over here for now. Ain't nobody got flags. Nobody's buying uh, ETFs. Nobody's buying Obama uh, basketball sneakers. <laughs> and... As I mentioned in my other video, one of the things that frustrates me is watching people just go bend over backwards to make excuses for this guy. Stop! He's a 77-year-old man. He broke the law on several things. Let him own up to it and suffer the consequences of his actions. <sighs> accountability. You know, it is funny. The GOP really prides itself on being the party of law and order and accountability. You know, then fine. Hold that accountability to everybody, even dear leader. Lord knows the Democrats would hold that with Joe Biden. We may not like it. We might have to hold our nose a little bit and really don't want to do it, but we'll do it. See Al Franken if you want to see an example of somebody who was probably overtreated for uh, the crime that he did. <sighs> Can't wait till Menendez gets, gets axed out of there too. Anyways, judge. Doesn't want his case overturned. He's going to look at everything and scrutinize it. He's really, he really is going out of his way to give Trump a fair shake. I don't doubt that. In the past, we've got the moon card, the mystery, the confusion, not knowing what to do. Truth is being hidden. Truth is going to be revealed. Um, this could just simply be, you know, you hit Donald Trump with all the charges that you can, you can muster up against him. Some may not pan out. A lot of times what we see with um, these cases is that most of the charges always stick. So it looks unusual to us when charges don't stick to it. Does that mean that all you know the remaining 35 charges are going to drop? No. I don't see that happening. It could happen, I suppose. But I don't think that's happening at this time. But, you know, again, this is... The, the moon eclipsing the sun. The truth will be revealed, but in the past it hadn't been revealed yet. Current situation is the Five of Swords. Um, this is <laughs> winning at all costs, narcissism, ruthlessness, winner takes all, um, no compromise whatsoever. <clears throat> this trial, once it goes, is going to be dynamite. Absolute dynamite. Um, you know, right up to Trump's lawyer saying, well, you dropped these six charges. You might as well just keep going and drop the other 35. That's not going to happen. Um, it could also be that, I don't know, he's coming up with his decision and about Fonnie Willis, whether he's going to keep Fonnie Willis or dismiss Fonnie Willis from the case. My intellectual mind tells me that, you know, she's not, she's not committed a crime. Or at least the defense is made a lot of allegations that she's committed crimes. They had a star witness. The star witness couldn't testify because of attorney-client privilege. 
Judge McAfee talked with the star witness. Star witness came back and basically said he didn't remember that he didn't actually know the dates he was speculating. So the star witness fizzled out. Now, is there some shady stuff going on with that star witness? Sure looks like it. And if you all want a conspiracy theory, go dig down that. Because it's like, why? Why did you say this? Why did you change your mind? And why did you sound completely and utterly unbelievable when you said it was just speculation and and other things? You know, you can... You can the right will say, oh, you know, Fonnie Willis threatened him or something like that. The left will say that... Um, he was making it all up to bring her down or something like that. And who knows what happened, but that's the one really shady thing that's gone on there. And I don't know if we'll ever find out what happened. Okay. But, um, and I forgot where I was going with this. Um, you know, Fonnie Willis, my logical mind tells me she hasn't broken any crimes and the defense hasn't shown it. No, having a boyfriend on there is not a crime. Now there's, and I had posted up my community page, there's appearances, you know, things can look shady where there's smoke, there's fire, and you know, uh, you don't wanna have the appearance of uh, have having a conflict of interest. And that has its own, um, uh, its own consequences for it. Uh, I, uh, the Trumpers absolutely want Fonnie Willis removed from this case. The non-Trumpers want Fonnie Willis staying on. Maybe the, it, this could be one of those things where the judge reprimands her and she gives him some attitude and says, are you saying I'm guilty or not guilty? And he's just going to, you know, he would say, well, you need to behave better. It's like, well, are you kicking me off this case? Or do I have to kick, you know, she might get go one up with this and then re, she might pull herself off of it. He may keep her on it. He may send her for a reprimand, like basically getting sent to HR and, you know, getting a wrist slap that way. He might urge her to step down and let somebody else take the case. Don't know if that was the reading last night. There's just all different ways that can happen. But with this case, everybody's got an angle. Everybody wants to win everything with no compromises whatsoever. This is going to be a dynamite case when it comes. And he knows it. It's also, he's a young judge. He's also up... Um, <laughs> He's going to be scrutinized for this case, too. So he has to make sure that he's done everything by the book. Overarching energy is the page of wands. Again, a young judge working his way through this process. And he's fairly transparent, I would say. He explains himself much more than I would say Judge Cannon explains herself with the Mar-a-Lago documents case. As far as that goes, you want a moon card. That's This is like Judge Cannon right here. So, yeah, we can thank our lucky stars that he at least doesn't appear to operate like Judge Cannon does. Again, the Democrats say he's just as bad as she is. We haven't seen it yet, man. Let's, let this thing play out. Just let this play out. Again, here we go. Um, what's energy run these charges? Oh, look at the guy's got the same outfit on. Okay, so you got the six of coins and you got the six of swords. He probably sent some of these charges away. It was six charges, right? So yeah, six of them got sent away. Uh, because right now he wants... It's like, if you want to keep those charges, that's fine. You have to go f find more clarity and be much more specific with it. Otherwise, they're not allowed to stay. <laughs> um... I'm chuckling because uh, one of the things I've been uh, watching recently is uh, Michael uh, Francis. Uh, he's a convicted mob boss from New York. And uh, it's been really entertaining listening to some of his podcasts and him talking about the federal government. And basically the federal government can cheat on a lot of things, especially if you're in the mob. Can you imagine? He doesn't like RICO cases. <laughs> Who could have known? But... Um, his whole point, his biggest anger with the government isn't the fact that they went after him and brought him to court. He just wanted them to bring him to court for the stuff that he actually did, not on fake charges. That's And that's why I'm chuckling. It's like, he would like, to, oh, cool, you know, if these charges aren't real, send them away. Now, they could very well be real, but you got to have clarity as to whether they're real or not. For now, they go away. They could come back. Maybe not. Who knows? Out comes the fool card. I think that's I think that's it though. As far as charges going away, 
and stuff like that, I think that's going to be the only tranche that goes away. The full card means to me is like, okay, I've reviewed this case. I've agonized over it. I've looked at the charges and the evidence. Um, I don't want this thing overturned on appeal. So I'm going forward with my decision. My decision is these six charges are going to go away. And now that they've gone away, we can start this case. Because justice. All right. So my prediction is that these six charges go away. The Fonnie Willis and her team um, will not successfully bring these charges back, either because they can't or it's not worth the effort to do it. The other 35 charges might be just enough to get their case across the finish line, and they don't need these additional charges. Okay. So don't panic. Don't fear. Don't get angry. There's, it's you know, in some of this, it's like watching a football game. It really is. And you got Auburn fans and you got uh, Alabama Crimson Tide fans. War Eagle, War Tide. I'm sorry, Roll Eagle, Roll Tide. No, <laughs> get it right, David. War Eagle, Roll Tide. Uh, and they're just not going to see eye to eye. Any call the referee makes, half the stadium is going to boo it and half the stadium is going to cheer it right like any sporting event and then there's going to be some people who who are re just really interested in seeing the game play out and they just want to see it be fair so the problem is is that and it's actually not a bad analogy the auburn versus alabama they are rivals um and there's a lot of passion a lot of irrational passion that goes with it the only difference is is that Alabama and Auburn, when they're done, they're done. Somebody gets to hold the trophy for a year. This is for, you know, this like this upcoming election is literally for the uh, sanctity of the democracy of this country. Or in the case of this Georgia case, holding somebody accountable for trying to change the election results. Again, there's going to be a population watching this video that are going to say it's, it's a lie. Trump never did that. Dude's on the phone with Raffensperger saying he needs 10,780 votes, which is one more than he has. What do you think he meant by that? You know, it's okay to say, sure sounds like he was trying to get extra votes in there or votes tossed out or numbers changed so that he could win. His parents did. His parents failed him, man. Trump's parents failed him. They did not raise a responsible young man. All right. Um, what else do I want to ask here? Oh, um, how somebody had asked this in the comments about Judge McAfee. How is Judge McAfee feeling after he rules on, uh, like? The Fawny Willis decision. Let's see how McAfee is feeling about that. They said there's one question. I think that's what they were asking. They're asking how he, I would have asked how how he was feeling. Okay, let's ask. We're here. How's McAfee going to feel after the Fawny Willis decision, which is supposed to come out any day now? Oops. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say whoops. I thought I think the camera up. <laughs> uh, Eight of Swords. Boy, this card sure comes up a lot. Um. Hostage, hands are tied. Asking how McAfee is feeling, not Fonny Willis. Hands are tied. Does that mean it's his hands are tied, he feels like he has to let her go? Or his hands are tied because maybe he suspects that there's shadiness over there, but the defense didn't really prove it. I'm, I'm kind of leaning with the latter. Uh, again, just from my logical mind, um... The def I don't know what the defense showed that would uh, prove beyond a reasonable doubt that uh, Fonnie Willis is is uh, corrupt and the investigation is corrupt. Crossed with the tower. Both these cards came up the other day, didn't they? And that was the, the yes or no card. Uh, sudden endings, sudden, sudden things being um, brought forward here. Now I'm going to try and think of this. This is how he's feeling. This might actually be describing... Again, what happens with Fonnie Willis? And if this is describing what happens with Fonnie Willis, it's going to be, does she stay on the case? Is she reprimanded? 
Does she step down from the case? Or is the whole case tossed out? Underneath is the King of Swords. So there's um, a really harsh decision, very black and white decision that's going to be made or how he's feeling. Is he trapped? Things coming <coughs> to an end. You know what? Regardless of what decision um, the judge makes, he's kind of stuck. This is the Auburn, Alabama thing again. Uh, he's stuck with whatever decision he makes because... Either the, the, the Tide fans are going to hate him or the Eagle fans are, are going to hate him. But he's got to bring this thing to an end. Now, I, I did have a, a number of viewers comment, this is something that should never have happened in the first place. And I could throw on that one too. Specifically, if this had been a white person, especially a white male, would this have even happened? I want to throw on that one because I think that's actually a really interesting question to throw on there already i know the opinions on that one but you know it, we can look at it from a spiritual sense as well um this could also be one of those things where women are just held to a higher standard and and uh non-caucasian people are held to a higher standard and if you're both you're held to a higher standard too and any error that you make always risks tearing down what you've built up uh, how but how is he feeling? He's got to bring this thing to. He's got to basically land, make his decision on this strength card. He's going to look at the case, look at the evidence, look at the strength of the evidence. It might be a bitter pill to swallow. It may not be. Let's see what the evidence shows. Current situation: Knight of Cups. He, it's almost like he's offering a compromise. He comes up with a solution. He's going to offer something that uh, I think he thinks is fair. But, you know, this is not favoritism type fair. This is legal fair. Right? Um, he, he's worked with Fonnie Willis before. He's donated to her campaign. But that's not why he's doing it. He's trying to be fair. He's a member of the Federalist Society. He's a Republican. Whatever this offer is, he's not doing it because he's right wing and a Federalist. He's doing it because it's fair. Okay? I could be, and again, we'll know in a, month, a year's time if I'm completely off base, if this guy's biased as I'll get out, or if he's fair. Right now, nothing I'm nothing I'm picking up on tells me that he's biased. People have their opinions. I respect that. This is a highly charged Five of Swords uh, event, but um, for right now, he hasn't shown the level of corruption that, again, that I would say I and Eileen Cannon has shown. Uh, let's see. Overarching energy is the magician. You know, manifesting something. It's not an illusion. He manifests something. I, he, I, I do, he, he somehow manages to navigate through all this. I think what this also says is if there's illusion or BS out there, and that's not the word, I actually wanted to use the full word. <laughs> um... He's seeing through it. This could be a compromise, some interesting form of compromise that he comes up with. But to me, this is like he's going to land this plane that seems to be all over the place. He's going to issue his ruling. And it's going to be a firm ruling. And get ran. No, things will happen with this. And this is interesting because this card came out with Fonnie Willis on that previous reading. The Wheel of Fortune. Um, and, I'm on this, and, and this is how Fonnie Willis... That's right, because I did one, how is McAfee feeling? How is Fonnie Willis feeling? And this one came out here in like her signifier card with the Wheel of Fortune. Regar I don't, I'm not sure what his decision is. If he decides to keep her, the case keeps going. If he decides that she, you know, something happens where she steps down, maybe he, maybe he suggests that this would be a great, if you were to step down, uh, that would be great. I'm not going to order you to, you can volunteer to do it. And she might look at that and say, you know what, we keep the case going. I don't need to be involved in this one. I'll be behind the scenes driving things. I don't need to be the face of it. That could be it as well. 
Or this could be that, you know, I want you to go. And she's like, fine, I'm going. But the, um, the again, the logical part of me is, is just, I'm, I don't see where he has a case, a cause to dismiss her. And I was, this is how he was feeling about it or the results of it. The case is going forward. Regardless of what he decides, this case is going forward. This case is not, uh, it's not over. It's not done. It's going to progress. That Wheel of Fortune might mean there's changes to it. We will know by the end of the week. This has been a really hard read for me to get a hold of. I can't, it's, I look at these cards and maybe my spirit guides are just like, oh, for God's sake, how many times do we have to tell you the same message? Dipshit, <laughs> how come you can't figure it out? <laughs> it's, it's all going to work out. It's all going to work out. Just, and here's the thing that I have to keep getting myself in the mindset of that I, I just have to assume that other than the Alvin Bragg trial, that none of the trials uh, regarding Trump are going to uh, begin or can be certainly not be completed before the elections. If any of them do, it'll be amazing. But just, we're not going to get through this. The government, the, the legal system is not going to save us in this one. It's just going to have to be us doing it. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't like that answer either. Um, if this had been a Caucasian male, if this had been me, <laughs> if this had been Andrew Cuomo, if this had been, let's give me a prosecutor here, um, would this have even happened? this had been a white male prosecutor would this have even happened i think even the oj trial uh marcia whatever her name was clark i believe she had a relationship going with another one of the lawyers that didn't generate nearly the scandal this did that was a murder trial if this was a white person a white male would this have even happened king of swords with Judge McAfee, it would have. But maybe that's what that King of Swords is, is that um, it should, it shouldn't. But, you know, here's the white guy with the sword, right? What are we going to cross that with? The tower card. <laughs> oh, maybe the, oh, God. Well, that answers a lot. That answers a lot when I keep getting the Eight of Swords and the Tower card. Yeah, basically the whole reason why we're going through this, and I'm sorry to say it because it, it sounds terrible coming out of my mouth, but I'll say it anyway. The whole reason this is happening, she's a black woman who's smart, who's intelligent, who's aggressive, who's outspoken, and uh, <laughs> white men... <laughs> have a real problem with that. It makes them feel really inadequate. And for those of you, <laughs> for those of you watching, I made a little crooky thing with my pinky, which is a sign for somebody who doesn't have um, a very large um, male appendage. And so you've got that, that, uh, that small man complex, if you know what I mean. <laughs> They don't know what to do with it. Yeah, I think that, well, yeah, this is telling me to, yeah, if this was a, a white male, wouldn't have happened. Wouldn't have happened because of values, societal values. It wouldn't be worth pursuing. It, it just, mm. ah, you always, you always love it when the drunken hillbilly brawl card shows up. In the past, would this have happened? I should just make this a four card. I don't need to do anything along those lines. A four card is fine with a cross. Yeah, uh, no, the fighting, the the advantage, the uh, you know, again, the way the laws are written, the way society has been, um, when there's some sides have an unfair advantage in the fight. 
you had to have affirmative action basically installed in order to try and level the playing field, to level the scales of justice, to help marginalized people have a chance at something like this. <clears throat> but it's still a white man's game. It's not a level playing field. There's still a disparity here. And maybe that's one of the things that um, that the judge is considering is that you know he doesn't he wants to be fair to Donald Trump, but he doesn't he also wants to be fair to Fonnie Willis. That could be what this burden card's been that whole time too. You know, it's not a burden to the man; it's a burden to, it's a burden to the judge because you know you have to overcome that bias. You know, kind of like I get accused of my biases with these readings because I don't really ever say anything high energy or complimentary or positive about Mr. Trump. And that is a bias on my part. I don't read reversals. So I look at the person's behavior. Do they act in a higher intention way or do they act in a low energy way? Are they, are they selfish? Are they, or do they serve others? Are they a what about me or are they what about them? You know, it, it makes it easy after a while to figure it out. Honestly, I don't understand the allure of Donald Trump. He's an obvious, he's a liar. He's an obvious liar. He tells provable lies. He's a con man. Absolute con man. He's a salesman. He tells you anything you want to hear to make the sale. Doesn't have to be true. He's, his, his, he's got a narcissistic personality disorder. Malignant narcissist personality disorder. But all these things are great if you're a marketing person. Uh, or a salesperson, or a carnival barker, you know, whatever it is, if you have, if, you're, if your morals and ethics are suspect or optional, <laughs> and you want, all, you're, all you're doing is trying to make money and sell a product, those are absolute strengths. It's a boon. See, I said something nice about them. But it doesn't make it any less smarmy or slimy. Okay. Um, all right, Spirit, here we go. Give me a message I can share with my viewing audience regarding the integrity of Judge McAfee. High integrity, low integrity, integrity for purchase. <laughs> Is he a smarmy mofo? Where's my purple hat? <laughs> Had to put him in the stable. Or is he just just somebody who might be a little bit out of his depth trying to do the best he can? What can you tell me about Judge McAfee's integrity? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Four Carter. Signifier card. Page of Swords. He's just somebody out of his depth right now. He's trying. He is trying to do the best he can. He's out of his depth. That's not neither here nor there. It's just, that's this is what we've got. Young guy trying to do what he can, um, but might just be out of his depth. Let's see what we got here for the, the signifier cards underneath here. Um, out of his depth... But at the same time, trying to project the um, the sureness that a judge should want to project that their decisions are are not unquestionable, but he is he's looked at all the angles on it. And he's defeated all the weak arguments so that all that's left are the strong arguments. This would be, again, an energy of, I do not want my case overturned. There is a confidence, almost an arrogance with him. And I mean, and I mean like it, uh, a goal that he sets for himself. I'm not saying he's coming across as arrogant or anything on those lines. This is kind of like his, um, this can almost be his self-criticism. He's got to be the best. Because he's new and this is a big case. Um, 
we're going to find out about him. We're going to find out about his values and his judgment. Um, if I were to look at these cards, he is new, but you know what? He's got insight. He might look, he looks for things. He looks for clues. Um, he's looking for... I think like good solutions. He's looking for value. He's <clears throat> he's how do I how do I want to say this card? Uh, public service. He it's like he sees the value in his job, how it impacts people. The the coins are all about values. Uh, and maybe it's even that he wants to he wants to bring his values in with his judgment. Now, mind you, he's a judge, so he's going to be ruling on the law, and his his rulings are going to be his rulings. Um, I don't think this nine of coins means that he's been bought out. That could be one interpretation of it. Um, this could very well be to me. You know what this is. He, he values the rule of law, and I think there's ambition with him to want to be more than what he is right now. But that's just going to take time. But he needs to make good judgments on this one. I don't think this is the Federalist Society dumping suitcases full of cash on his front porch step. You know what I mean? This is his own ambition that he can, you know, rise up in the uh, judicial ranks and maybe, you know, could be, you know, I don't want to say Supreme Court justice, but make it to like the appellate courts or something, you know, get work his way up in the court system to be, yeah, to be like an appeals court judge or something like that. I, I don't know the hierarchy of the judiciary, but it would seem to me that being on an appeals court or even a state Supreme Court type thing, he has ambitions for something like that. In this case, can um, can be a real launching point for something along those lines. So he is going to be scrutinizing everything and really taking a five of swords attitude of he doesn't want anything questioned on this when it comes time for the appeal. He does not want this appealed or anything overturned on appeal. And again, I think personally, I think he has ambitions and he wants to be more than what he is now, but he's young and this is where he is. He's had this opportunity handed to him and he's going to do the best that he can. When he said something to the tune of he wanted to be able to talk to his kids and said he gave everybody a fair shake, he means it. Every, I get no smarminess, no low energy from this guy. Okay? So, um... 50% of the people are not going to get the answer they want when he makes his decision. Roll with it. If he decides to keep her and you're a big Trumper fan, roll with it. Just accept the fact that what happened was not something that was uh, an offense worthy of having her removed, nor did it taint the evidence. The judge will rule on the evidence. If you're a funny supporter and she does get removed... Roll with it. The district attorney has other uh, attorneys. They will do a very good job. They've got the information they need. They already have multiple convictions. And those uh, people that were convicted will be turning state's evidence against the uh, defendants. Uh, this case is, you know, again, for the, for the Trumpers out there, this case isn't going away. It, it just isn't. You've already got guilty, please. You've got uh, those. You've got Sidney Powell. You've got um, uh, was it Chesbro and uh, Kaylee McEnany? I think are the three that have been uh, who've, who've pleaded guilty to this and are turning state's evidence. They're going to spill the beans about what the the plans were and who was ordering what, when, and why. They didn't do it because they were innocent, but uh, the risk wasn't worth it. They did it because. And especially if you heard Kelly McEnany's apology for it, they did it because they knew that they had a lot of criminal liability with this 
and this was a fantastic deal. And, but what they have to do is they have to turn over the folks that were the masterminds of this. Accept that. This is the American legal system. And if we lose our legal system, we lost everything in this country at this point. And everything seems to be on a knife's edge. So roll with it, folks. Just roll with it. It's going to work out. Okay. Thank you very much for watching this very long video. <laughs> Thank you for your likes, shares, comments, and everything you do to help feed the YouTube algorithm so that my video makes it out to a wider audience. To folks who just discovered this channel recently for the first time, welcome. I hope you found this reading insightful, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.